Uh, what about in, you know, over the years? There's been a lot of so-called enlightened beings. Yes. Yourself included. Um, I know I'm called an enlightened being, but I don't call myself. Well, that. perhaps you were in, the, in 2,000 years ago. No. 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 So, what would you consider an enlightened being? And part two of that is, wouldn't Buddha have been considered someone who's gone the, on the divine path? Well? I know Buddha is considered by everyone else to be someone on the divine love path, but Buddha is actually on the natural love path in the sixth sphere. That's where he currently resides. So, so, so the truth is that Buddha, in his, in his in, in his original concept, of, he doesn't have a concept of God that actually is God's concept of God. So Buddha's concept of God is totally different to God's concept of God. And that's why Buddha is not at one with God. All right. So are you saying you can be enlightened and not be with God? Everyone who's defined as a light enlightened is actually usually not on the divine love path. They're all people who believe themselves to be enlightened in the perfect condition of natural love in the sixth sphere. There are literally billions of spirits in what you would call an enlightened state, but it's not what I'm calling a, an at-one-ment state. That's totally different. So could you say what the difference is? Um, I've already stated some of the differences. One of them is this, is this thing where I say I'm an enlightened being. I'm sorry, I'm not an enlightened being. I never was. In the first century, I wasn't an enlightened being. Does that make sense? In the first century, all I was was the same as what you are, a child of God who went through this process of the new birth into a condition of atonement. I'm still God's child. I don't want you to connect to me because I'm some enlightened being. I want you to connect to God because God's the enlightened being and no one else really is. And particularly all the people who claim themselves to be an enlightened being are not enlightened beings, really. Now, the enlightened being and a lot of other terminologies are all about how they describe their progression on the natural love path. Does that make sense? So, it's, it, And the problem is, is that there are whole groups of spirits who were with us here today who are prompting many of your questions who believe themselves to be light, enlightened beings. And th the truth is that they are on the natural love path in the sixth sphere of their development and they're not yet even making the transition because they still think they understand the divine love path but they haven't experienced it emotionally. And when they allow themselves to experience it emotionally, they will know the difference. But it's like you, how do I get you to experience love? I can't get you to experience, I can talk about love all day but I can't get you to feel the emotions of love for God for example, can I? I can talk to you about if you love God and you think, yeah, I think I love God, but you know, until you feel this passionate desire and longing for God, you will not feel what it's like to love God, let alone to experience God's love to the condition of atonement. The problem is that almost all of the so-called enlightened beings that have ever been on this planet have all been on the natural love path and many of them still are, right? Because they don't want to give up their concept of self. Or they've given up their concept of self, so when I say don't want to give up their concept of self, I mean self-reliance. Or they've given it up so much that they've given up their free will. And on this path, you never give up your free will, ever. In fact, your free will multiplies and grows on this path. Remember, I said one of the reasons for incarnation is to fully realise your own free will. So giving it up is not going to be beneficial. What Buddha has done, he's, he's in the sixth sphere, I've met him many times in the spirit world, he's in the sixth sphere, he has given up the whole concept that he's an individual. He does not believe himself to be an individual anymore. And what he's doing is he's totally reliant on this concept that has overcome his being, that he's actually not an individual. He's now, in his own belief, become God in his own belief. And he is in a six-sphere state in that belief. It's very, very hard to talk to him. It's almost impossible to convince him anything other than what he believes in that state. And this is the problem, is that many of the so-called leaders who were looked up to here on earth and who have been looked up to for years and generations are actually in that state. All I am is your brother and all I've done is done the same as what I'm just saying to you, you can do. And I'm never going to be an enlightened individual. 
I'm never going to call myself that. I'm never going to call myself a guru. I'm never going to call myself an avatar. I am not those things. All I am is the same as you. I am just a child of God right? who has received divine love in the same manner that I would like to describe to you that I've, you know, that you can receive it. That's all. That's all I am. Does that make sense? Now you don't have to agree with me because you can actually pass, or you can get mediums to talk to Buddha if you want. You will have a lot of trouble getting a medium to talk with Buddha because Buddha does not normally do that. But you might have to pass before you investigate and get to the sixth sphere yourself before you can investigate where he is. But I can tell you at the moment this is where he is. I'm hoping that with all the changes that occur on the earth coming up, with all the different things that are going to happen over the next 10 years or so, that he will be in a different condition. But I've seen many people take many thousands of years from his condition to get into a different condition. Remember, I've lived 2,000 years, so I've seen many people stay in these states for 1,000 years at a time of this condition. And in the six fear condition, not wanting to change, believing very, very firmly a whole set of beliefs that lock them in the same place that you on earth believe is an enlightened condition and it's not. It's a condition of shutdown, emotional shutdown, and going into this so-called nirvanic bliss, which is actually, in many cases, just the projection of all the adulation and glorification from other people entering their soul. It's a very damaging place for them to exist in. And I know some of this is confronting, by the way, what I'm saying. You don't have to believe it, remember. Hi, Jay. I was just wondering about the ascended masters, like St. Germain, Skutumi, um, again, the definition on earth of ascended masters, yeah. every single person in the spirit world who's raised themselves, in terms of their connection with God, they actually feel that God's raised them into this condition of atonement, don't call themselves an ascended master. They just don't. What, an ascended master, what does that really mean? Isn't that a sort of like a condition of glorification in the end? Saying, I'm the master, you're the slave is almost the implication, right? Nobody in that state calls themselves an ascended master. So is that just a human terminology? It's a, it's a human term in order to glorify generally a medium's connection to a certain spirit. Okay. And the person on earth needs to look at the emotion of what that is and that's an emotion in them that they need to say to you, oh, aren't I wonderful, I'm connecting to the ascended master, Saint Germain. Now, Saint Germain is on the divine love path. And Saint Germain is in the celestial kingdom, but Saint Germain doesn't call as himself a ascended master. Yeah. So, like Francis, many of you have heard of Saint Francis, right? Of Assisi. Same goes. Many of you will call him an ascended master. He doesn't call himself that at all. What about Kutumi? Well, this is a this is a state with a lot of these, but. But bear in mind that many of what you call ascended masters are actually not ascended masters. There are people in the natural love state, in the six fear state, who believe themselves to be ascended. And that's a very different condition than actually being at one with God. Because in, when you're in at one with God, you don't even call yourself ascended. It's a natural state every single person can get into. It's a state of humility, not a state of grandeur and power and all that stuff. You, you don't even think of any of those things in that state. You follow me? It's like, I do. Can you see the difference? I do. If I'm, if I'm saying to you, look, I'm different to you, and you know, whatever I've done, you can't do. I'm an ascended master. I've always been there before you, whatever, whatever, and I rave on about that, and I don't believe inside of my heart that you could ever be where I've been, then aren't I setting myself above you? Does God set me above you? No. God doesn't set me above you. I am a child of God. But those beings that you love. Not all the ones you've mentioned are, no. Okay. No. You know how you get these angel cards from Dorian Virtue or whatever, and you get many of the ones on those cards are actually in the sixth the natural love state, and some of the ones on those cards are in a divine love state. It just depends. Like a lot of times they're treated as ascended masters, but on the earth it's how we define things. We're always interested in defining things, right? Why? Because we're addicted to this emotion of comparing. 
We're addicted to this emotion of wanting to think that I'm better because I have this connection with this spirit, you know. I went,